Hello, and welcome to the ArcServe Unified Data Protection video series. In this video, you'll learn how to get started using the ArcServe Unified Data Protection Console. Here's a typical Windows 2012 start menu, where you'll find the ArcServe UDP console icon. Launching the console in this way opens the default browser and presents the login screen. To easily connect remotely to the ArcServe UDP console, just substitute the host name of the ArcServe UDP server in the URL. Provide administrative credentials, and you are greeted with the welcome dialog. Click Get Started to open the Resources tab to complete these tasks, or you can click the X to close the dialog. Here's the initial view of the UDP console dashboard tab. The Help menu on the top right provides access to product information, including managing licenses and updates. Selecting a merged job displays its details in the right pane. Click View Logs, and the Log tab becomes active with the filter selecting the associated messages. Back on the Dashboard tab, we can look at another job, Replication Out, or the details on a virtual standby job. You can use the Group Jobs by Plan checkbox to reset the jobs by plan. Expanding the plan provides the job details. Use the drop-down to change the selection range by time period. Here I'll select last seven days. Now the last seven days of the job data is presented by plan. Aside from the completion status views, there's also a jobs in progress view. Selecting the running job displays related data in the right pane. Then click details. And a pop-up window provides real-time information, as well as a cancel button. Returning to the most recent jobs, all jobs completed page, the backup incremental is now recorded as complete. Now let's move to the Resources tab. One of the features we can do here is right-click on the drop-down on the right side of the column heading, and you can sort the column in ascending or descending order, or add or remove columns. Selecting a node in the Resources tab displays its details in the right pane. These can also be expanded for more information regarding the node. Also, the action drop-down is relative to the selected nodes and allows quick launching of basic tasks. The Add Nodes button allows users to define nodes to the ArcServe UDP console. Choose the appropriate method from the drop-down to complete the rest of the fields on the screen, then click Save. Now, back in the Resources tab, Select Recovery Point Servers in the left pane. Here we see two Recovery Point Servers with their corresponding data stores. Select a Recovery Point Server, and the recent events are displayed on the right. You can also select the data store. To see the plan and nodes using the data store, selecting a node allows you to browse all recovery points. A list of events is displayed to show you what was performed within the last days or months. Select the last seven days to see what transpired for the virtual machine FSHA-Master. Then exit out of the screen and back to the Resources tab. Click Add a Recovery Point Server, and you can specify and deploy to create another Recovery Point Server. Back in the Resources tab, you can right-click a Recovery Point Server and the functions including Install Upgrade Recovery Point Server are available to easily roll out updates. Now, selecting all plans from the left pane, the three plans defined on this console are displayed. Choose a plan, and the Actions menu provides quick access to relevant actions. Also, Add a Plan allows a new plan to be created. Here's the list of initial tasks for the plan. The plan is a combination of tasks that are combined to provide the best protection strategies for nodes associated with the plan. Below the task is the Product Installation button. Here you can specify the deployment methods used by the plan when protecting nodes with older or no UDP agents installed. Let's choose Modify for the agentless plan defined here. The first task is displayed, and the Sources tab shows the protected node. Destination is the Recovery Point Server. The Schedule tab lets you set the day and time schedule for performing the task. 
and add multiple schedules like Backup, Merge, and Throttle. And the Advanced tab provides application truncation, as well as pre and post script execution, and enable email alerts. Now, selecting the second task, Virtual Standby, the source is predetermined to be the prior task backup, or whatever task one is, which in this case, it's backup host base agentless. Here in the Virtualization Server tab, lets you configure the hypervisor that hosts the standby VM, as well as the monitor that checks that the production server is running. The Virtual Machine tab displays the parameters for the VM being created from the backup on the hypervisor. And finally, in the Advanced tab, the timeout and frequency used by the monitor. Now let's look at the Linux plant back in the Resources tab. Here, there's only one backup task, and we see the source node. In the Destination tab, NFS, CIFS, or Local Drive are the destinations to select for Linux backup. In the Schedule tab, you can click the backup schedule listed here and modify the fields as appropriate. Finally, in the Advanced tab, you can set your backup throughput limit and pre-post scripts. Now let's look at the last plan, Windows Server Plan, back in the Resources tab. Here we have two tasks. Task 1, Backup, Agent-Based Windows, and Task 2, Replicate. Let's go with Task 1, and the source nodes for that task are displayed. Let's add a node. Click Add Nodes. The Select Nodes to Protect dialog opens. Just pick from the list of available nodes and move it over to the selected nodes, then click OK. In the Destination tab, the RPS server is selected. In the Schedule tab, here's an example of two schedules working together in a plan, as well as defining your own schedule of a backup plan and the number of recovery points to retain, and generate system and exchange catalogs. Here, the Advanced tab provides application truncation, apply commands or pre-post scripts, as well as enable email, job, and resource alerts. Now let's look at Task 2, Replicate. The source is predetermined as the backup from Task 1. The destination is another RPS server and another data store. Recovery point servers can be selected from the drop-down. Once the recovery point server is selected, the corresponding data stores are displayed in the data store drop-down. Here in the Schedule tab, there's no schedule. Therefore, replication occurs after the backup completes. Replication schedules allows or prevents replication during selected times. And the Advanced tab provides email and job alerts. One of the task types listed here that you can add is replicate to a remotely managed RPS which means the destination RPS server is managed by another UDP console, which has to first be configured under a share plan that's available in the configuration tab of the console, which I'll briefly talk about later in this video. Note that the RPS server in task two may be remote in location, but it's managed by this UDP console, so the replicate task is appropriate. Back on the resources tab, select all nodes under virtual standby from the left pane Hover your mouse over the PFC status symbol to review the status of the job verification. This warning is acceptable in a lab environment. Similarly, clicking on the link in the plan column displays warnings relative to the plan. When you select a node, the details that pertain to the selected node is displayed in the right pane. Now let's look under the nodes category in the left pane. Here, under Custom Groups, Linux is created automatically when Linux nodes are defined to the UDP console. Once again, the details are displayed in the right pane. Same goes for the Windows group and the node under the vCenter ESX groups. Here, ArcServe Master is acting as the backup proxy for the agentless backup plan. So again, it's automatically added here and a group for Linux backup servers. Here we can see the plan groups and details. And here's the Linux plan. And finally, node information from the Windows Server's plan. Now let's look at the Reports tab. Here's the alert report. Click the Acknowledge link on the right if you want to remove the alert. 
or click on the alert text to display details. Here's the backup size trend report. And next, the node backup status report. Click on the graphic, and the node details are displayed. Selecting a node in the severity filter to display messages for an individual node. Here we see the virtualization protection status report. Again, click on the graphic to display the node information. Note that the protection type is host-based agentless backup and the virtual standby for this VM. And here is a managed capacity report with details used by the nodes. And finally, the data distribution on media report. Click the graph for node details. And you can click on each protected node to see the details as well. Now we move to the log tab of the UDP console. If we remove the node name generated from job ID, job type filters, and change the severity to warning and error, we see all the warning and error messages. Now let's limit the filter to errors, mostly backup and deployment issues that has obviously been resolved as evidenced in the successful backup reports. Let's limit the job type to replication. Oh, good, no errors. Now let's change the severity filter to all and we see only informational messages relating to replication. Now on to the configuration tab. Here we see the database configuration for the database used by the UDP console. The ArcServe Backup Data Synchronization Schedule lets you synchronize reports on CA ArcServe Backup. The SRM configuration specifies a collection of metrics to configure. The Active Directory Discovery configuration lets you configure automated node discovery. The Email and Alert configuration lets you configure email alerts. The Update configuration lets you configure the deployment of ArcServe UDP updates in your environment. And here you can update the administrator account. And here the installation settings for the agents that were pushed from the console can be set here. And finally, a share plan that is used only for the replicate to a remotely managed RPS task when adding a plan. This means that the RPS server you are replicating to is managed by another ArcServe UDP console. Now let's move on to the last tab, the High Availability tab. The Control Services and Scenario screen is displayed. This allows near real-time replication and failover for critical systems. The first step is to add the control service from ArcServe High Availability, R16.5, SP3 or higher. So let's click Add Control Service. The Add Control Service dialog opens. Specify the credentials of the system running the control service and click OK. Now we can see ArcServe Master listed under Control Services and Scenarios. You can expand ArcServe Master to see the scenarios. At the Scenarios level, click Create New Scenario. And the Create Full System Scenario Wizard opens to start creating scenarios for either the Replication and Data Recovery Scenario or High Availability Scenario. Follow the wizard to complete the scenario. Now, moving down to the file server scenario, the basic statistics and events are displayed. And the actions in this view pertain to the type of scenario selected. And that pretty much covers the last tab on the UDP console. That's it. This concludes our video. Thanks for watching. For more information on the features and benefits of this application, please read the documentation or visit the ArcServe Unified Data Protection Knowledge Center.